After 33 days at sea, we couldn't wait to go to shore to check out our new backyard and take care of logistics like checking in, getting money, buying food and diesel. We were about to learn just how remote the Marquesas are and that everything we'd like to buy simply isn't available. Continue watching to see our first impression of this far-flung land. Good morning, everyone. Waking up here in Nukahiva for the first time. It is stunning. Check out the view behind me. It's so beautiful. We are going to go in and see if we can find some food. It looks like a supply ship came in last night, and we heard that you have to go first thing in the morning. So we're going to go see what the story is maybe get some croissants and then later on around eight or nine uh, go and check in but the awesome thing is that you can actually go to shore if you arrive on the weekend uh, without checking in first so that's awesome it's still totally surreal to be here all right guys we are going ashore <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thanks for staying with Yoda. That's the saddest part. Yoda knew we were going ashore and she can't come. She was so excited. Oh my god. The Pacific stash. Boy, what in the world happened? We spent the last 10 months in Panama, so it had been a while since we were in a truly different landscape. The view before us was a feast for the eyes. Curiosity was at its peak as I wondered what it might be like ashore. Please. Let's try not to come yeah. Unland. Sea legs? A little bit. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. A little rubbery. Yeah. <laughs> First steps on land. How's it feel? Sea legs. My legs are a little rubbery. No, but you, it feels like everything is moving. It's like everything is moving. A little bit, right? Yeah. Oh my God, I feel like I'm like on a boat. Really? Yeah. My mind is just like sort of like juggling around. It is a weird feeling. Yeah. A little, uh, little unsettling here. It is, right? I know. Well, because of the fish. So we just asked uh, the guy that's anchored right next to us where the ATM is and the grocery store. The so we got, we got some info. Wow, how long is it gonna take for this? Uh, Mine's not bad. Uh, yeah, mine is still there, but you know, I probably have to probably in a year, so. Oh yeah, that's right, okay. yep. Being in such a vastly different place had our senses firing on all cylinders, not only taking everything in visually, but smelling the floral scent in the air, wow. listening to the music, the sound of the language, <laughs> waves crashing on shore, and cars passing by. Oh my goodness. It's super nice here, so clean, manicured. Yeah. Oh, look at this tree. Remember oh. this tree? Yeah. Oh. They're so beautiful, these trees. They make the most amazing flowers. They're just, they're small now, but you can see them on the ground. While we get money from the ATM, take a look at this beautiful view. It's so pretty. Wow. So you were saying, right, it's like a penny a franc? Yeah, I think it's a little less like yeah. Or but yeah, so you look at these beautiful. Oh wow. Yeah, they're yeah, South Pacific stiff. Francs. Ah, oh, look Gorgeous, at that. Man. That was easier than I figured it'd be, but we got money, so now we're in search of groceries. Grocery stores here are called Mecasense, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. We were so curious to see what was available. Though smaller than what we're used to, they seem to have a decent selection. Oh, yeah, this is where they have all the meat and stuff. Chocolate. And us. 
dog food. Canned veggies. Ooh, wine. Yeah. So food. We need food. And meat. We don't have anything. Yeah. The chicken, whole chicken was $13, so we said let's go back and see how much the tuna is, because <laughs> I don't have to eat chicken, I prefer to eat tuna. And we got bread and milk, and it was $11.90 South Pacific francs, which I guess that's probably $12 for five breads and five milks. <laughs> and Fabio is feeling sick to his stomach. I'm He's getting, getting seasick on land. <laughs> so this is an open air market near the place where we left the dinghy. And it's interesting because they have like, we got some cabbage, cucumbers, but they have off to the side crates that are saved for a school. They have like tomatoes and eggplants and peppers, but they're all saved. Available are bananas, pamplemousse, coconuts, more bananas, more of the same, and some cabbage and bok choy. We definitely think it's right the locals set aside food for the community. We just thought there might be a bit more variety left over. Oh, that's swordfish. Oh, wow. We. Oui. We. Oui, oui. Meal. Meal a kilo. Meal a kilo. Oh. So it's... Man, ten dollar, one kilo. Ten dollar a kilo, five hundred is better than chicken. Uh, <laughs> way better. Right. If you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> oh, three kilo. Oh, three kilo. <laughs> okay. Three kilo. Yeah. I got it. You Oh, it is. Oh, there he is. And breakfast of champions. First, whatever. <laughs> Cheers. Blanket. Cheers. Now that our bellies were full, and so were our grocery bags, we headed back to the boat to drop off our goodies. We just took our line. It's missing. I know I had the double tie, so... Yeah, no, no. I mean, our line is missing. No, it's here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I agree. That's pretty crazy. Somebody untied our dinghy and just like let it go. We gotta go back to the boat, get our paperwork, come back. We hired an agent to help us with formalities because I was applying for a one-year EU spouse visa. Look at this tiny little boat, oh my goodness. Like Tropical little rain shower. Pulls everything off. Yeah. Yodi! Hi Yoda, don't be mad at me. Okay guys, now it's gonna be challenging. Okay? Yeah. Hello. We arrived just in time. 
<laughs> oh no, you got all wet. You go. Looks incredible, huh? Yeah. Wow. What are you doing, Fab? Looking to see if there are parasites. Sometimes swordfish has those quiggly worms in there. All clear? It looks good. clear. We were back on shore to check into French Polynesia and check out the Chandlery. There's some things, not a lot of stainless steel. Interesting. Cleaners, biocide, acetone, various filters, impellers, flexible tubing for propane tanks, brass fittings, tools, and zincs. A little chandlery with some items. Oh, look how cute. A hen with all the little chickies. Q flag is coming down. We are official in French Polynesia. All right, it's going up. French Polynesia. Woo! There we go. We're taking a walk just here nearby the anchorage to check out these statues. A huge thank you to our patrons. We are so grateful for your support. If you'd like additional content and real-time updates, consider joining the Harbors Unknown community on Patreon. A tiki is a sculpture endowed with an important spiritual and symbolic force, integral to Polynesian culture with slight variations of the exact significance across Polynesia. Each tiki has its own meaning, representing different ideals. It is absolutely stunning here. It is just so lush. The mountains are just stunning. The textures, the colors, gorgeous. This is Tiki Tuhiva. Erected in 2017, it's the highest contemporary sculpture in the Pacific, standing at 12 meters tall and the warrior behind her 8 meters tall. The carving conveys the ancestral strength inherited from woman Tiki, the warden of tradition and knowledge, and warrior Tuhiva is stepping forward to master his future. Apparently, it's local tradition to write a message and insert it into the Tiki Tuhiva's belly button to immortalize your visit here. It's a bit of a sad morning. Ray is leaving us. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's been a great ride, man. Couldn't, couldn't ask for more. What a great trip. One of these days I'll learn how to pack. Ah. Well, you were only gone for like, I don't know how long, ever. Uh, two, two months? Almost. More or less. That was pretty good for that time. Bye, Ray. Thanks for everything. Yep, thank Amazing. you. Great adventures ahead. That's right. Have a safe flight. Thank you. Bye for now. <laughs> so we went over to the fuel dock just to get a couple of jerry cans of fuel to fill up the, because we only have seven gallons on port and we wanted to use the generator, wash clothes and stuff. And we found out that they're limiting the fuel to 50 gallons per person because a huge yacht filled up and now they don't have any left and there's not a ship coming in with more fuel until May 10th and we need fuel is because we have to sail to Papayete which is I think seven eight hundred miles to have the vet inspect Yoda because there is not a vet coming here for another month at least maybe they'll come in a month and so that's just not an option for us to keep Yoda on the boat that long so we have to take her there to have her inspected so she can go to shore. Yeah, that's the reality of sailing around the world with a dog. This will be tricky getting these down into the dinghy, huh? Yep. Very tricky. Wow. Not the easiest way to fuel up. No, no, yeah. I got you. Don't worry, what's it? 
Going, Fernando. Oh, good, slow, and it takes a little while to pump each jerry can down just by gravity, but it, it's going. Yeah, I'm going to put a couple here, and then I'm going to start on that side and then check and make sure there's sort of balance between the two of them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's all the fuel we can. They're allowed to get. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least I guess at least there was some, huh? Oh, it would have been much worse if they said no fuel. Oh my God. This tuna looks amazing, fam. Yeah, it really does. And how much was it? three dollars a pound wow that is incredible right from the fisherman yeah so what's going on i spend 50 percent of my time sailing and 50 percent on hold with the bng it's crazy yeah yeah we're trying to get the t3 ram ordered right well yeah replacement of t2 with the t3 because yeah. obviously the t3 the t2 is undersized but I mean, I've listened to this music, I don't know how long, it was, it's insane. Yeah, it's really pretty terrible. 50 minutes on hold with BNG. Ugh, the worst. Well, no, the worst was two hours in the United States. So maybe here in New Zealand, they are a little better, but so far I'm un unimpressed. Yeah. And they just hung up. Oh my God. After 50 minutes on hold, they hung up. We were warned cruising is working on your boat in exotic locations. Stay tuned to see what happens next time.